The way I found it wasn't special in the slightest. I was walking down the street listening to music and watching my feet as I walked down the cobblestone path so I didn't stumble, when I saw the edge of it peeking out of a pile of garbage that was put on the curb for pickup. I thought it was strange that it wasn't part of a bag, it was just situated by itself on the ground. I nudged the corner with my foot and dislodged the book from under the garbage bags. It was nothing special to look at either, just a simple black notebook with an elastic strap keeping everything in place and closed tightly. I threw it in my bag and continued on my way home. It was cold and I wasn't about to stop in the middle of the street on a February evening to read a notebook I'd found in the garbage pile. That sentence alone sounds absurd. I didn't even remember the book until the next day. It was a Saturday and I was cleaning my house and decided to clear out my bag as well. I opened the bag and it was the first thing I laid my eyes on. Cursing my forgetfulness from the day before, I put my tidying on hold and grabbed the book with a cup of tea and sat on my couch. I figured I was in for someone's diary or just a list of grocery items and if I had any identifying information I'll bring it back to whoever it belonged to. The first page was pretty inconspicuous. April 22nd, 1994. She chooses the lion. That was the only thing on the entire page, just four words. She chooses the lion. I had absolutely no idea what it meant, but I flipped to the next page to try to get more clarification on what this book could even be. April 29th, 1994. She chooses the rattle. She chooses the sweet potatoes. She chooses not to nap. At this point, I'm getting a little confused, but thanks to some of the diction, I figured out this must be about a baby. I thought, maybe it's a baby book. Maybe someone's mum wanted to have a unique take on their child's first few years of life, and was writing down all the important choices in everyday life for their daughter. But as I leafed through the pages, every single one of them was filled up. Each page was slightly crinkled. The ones at the end even worked with water stains, so I decided to flip to about the middle of the book to see what this could have continued as. January 18th, 2007. She chooses the blue shirt. She chooses the black jeans. She chooses the white sneakers. She chooses to walk to school. She chooses to ignore the homeless man on the street. She chooses to ignore her friends yelling her name behind her. She chooses to keep her algebra homework in her bag when the teacher asks to see it. She chooses to leave early from school. She chooses to walk home the long way. She chooses her first cigarette. She chooses not to eat dinner. She chooses to not fall asleep. We'd moved out of the infancy stages clearly, but this gave me absolutely no more clarification than I had previously. It couldn't be this girl's mother writing about her life. How would she know about the algebra homework and a presumably 13 year old girl definitely wouldn't tell her mother she smoked her first cigarette. But the child can't be writing this for herself either if it started back when she was just a baby. The only solution my mind could spin was that whoever was writing this down in the journal was some sort of outside observer. I read a few more entries from her teenage years into her early 20s and from what I can tell she finishes high school, goes to a local college, ends up married at 20 with a baby at 21. The next entry that I found to be interesting was the one on the day of her son's birth, or what I assumed to be her son's birthday. March 11th, 2015. The child was born today. She did not choose this, he did. The next entry is as follows. March 12th, 2015. We cannot see what she chooses. He has chosen for her. From what I can tell, he is definitely not her husband. She got married back in 2014 and this had never happened before. She had never not had the power of choice. It has to be tied back to her child, who must have been a son. The entry for the day after sent a shiver running down my spine. I put down my tea at this point and devoted absolutely all my attention to the notebook. March 13th, 2015 We cannot see what she chooses. We can only see what he chooses for her. He must not get in the way. Who are these people that are writing down her choices? They keep referring to themselves as we, but they make absolutely no mention to themselves, and there are absolutely no defining characteristics about them that help me identify them in the slightest. What was her son not get in the way of? How is a three-day-old baby messing up any plans that these mysterious people have for this innocent girl? There's a gap in the record-taking after this last entry. Clearly, the son affected their vision of our protagonist in the story, and they were unable to record any of her choices of the day. But it does pick up again just this week. I'm going to outline the week as I see it. February 26th, 2021. We can see her again. She chooses to send the boy to school. She chooses to lock the door and close the blinds. She chooses to listen to us. She chooses to accept us. She chooses to open her mind to us. 
she chooses to allow us control. February 27th, 2021. She chooses to send her son and husband to the park. She chooses to clear the basement. She chooses to purchase a padlock. She chooses to lock the basement. She chooses to keep the only key on a necklace. She chooses to purchase what we need. She chooses to continue to listen to us. She chooses us. February 28th, 2021. She chooses to pretend to be ill when her husband asks about church. She chooses to tell them to go without her. She chooses to pretend to be asleep until the car leaves. She chooses to get dressed. She chooses to go to the basement. She chooses to prepare. She chooses the candles. She chooses the table. She chooses the time. She chooses the person. March 1st, 2021. She chooses tomorrow. She chooses to walk down the street. She chooses to listen to the man's story. She chooses to smile at him. She chooses to invite him back to her home. She chooses to lead him inside. She chooses to serve him tea. She chooses to move his body on her own. She chooses to put him on the table rather than the floor. She chooses the knife. She chooses the time. She chooses the ropes. March 2nd, 2021. She chooses today. She chooses to send her son to school and move to the basement. She chooses to remove the gag and listen to his pleas. She chooses to replace the gag. She chooses to light the candles. She chooses to recite the words. She chooses to summon us. She chooses to see us. She chooses to let us into her body. She chooses to let us take control. She chooses to no longer choose. The last entry in the book and the last page of the Water Warped pages of the journal are dated for tomorrow. I have no idea who this woman is, who these writers are, or who the man in her basement is, but someone has been kidnapped today. Someone is on a table, gagged in her basement, and tomorrow she's no longer going to be herself. I don't know how, but I need to try and do something. I don't even know who this journal is written about, or who could have written it but it has extended this woman's entire life up until this point, and even into the future. My mind is absolutely swimming with questions right now, and I tried to work on them myself, but I found it impossible. I can't find anything online about entries that monitor your choices or make them for you, and I can't get free questions out of my head. If tomorrow's the last entry, where does she go? Who takes over her body, and how can I stop it?